All right, YouTube, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the Greylog Docker container. We're gonna go through the entire process. We'll start with a freshly installed Ubuntu 24.04 server. From there, we'll get the Docker engine installed and create our Docker Compose and .env files. We're gonna look at the Greylog data node and the pre-flight interface to set this up. And finally, we'll log into the web GUI so we can start using Greylog. So let's get started. Okay, so first we need to get the Docker engine installed. We can follow the instructions on the Docker Docs website to install Docker. The two main things we are looking for is how to add the Docker repository to our server and what to install. We want to copy the commands here to add the official Docker repository to our server. I'm going to go root permanently for this part by typing sudo i. We will paste the commands into our terminal and hit enter. Next, we need to copy and paste the commands to actually install Docker. We can verify Docker is working by running the command docker space dash v. So the great log stack involves three separate applications or Docker containers. We have the great log software itself. This contains the web GUI and all the code to make great log work. We have MongoDB. This is a database that will hold all of our configuration data for great log. And finally, we have the great log data node. This is a document based database that holds all of our log data. Under the hood, this is really a customized version of OpenSearch that Greylog maintains. You can use OpenSearch instead of the data node, but I wouldn't recommend it unless you have a very good reason to run it. If we head over to the Greylog GitHub page, they have a repo for Docker Compose. Here we can find examples of the Docker Compose files. They have examples for setting up a Greylog cluster, the enterprise version, a log forwarder. In this video, we're going to be using the open core example. This file contains all the containers and configuration options we need to start using the Greylog solution. We need to copy the contents of this file over to our server. First, we will create a new directory called greylog-docker. Inside this directory, we will create our docker compose file by typing nano space docker-compose.yml. We will paste the contents of the example file and save this file. If we look at our Docker Compose file, we have references to environment variables with a dollar sign and curly brackets. When we run this Docker Compose file, these values will be replaced with values inside a .env file we need to create. We do this so we don't put sensitive information inside of our Docker Compose file. We need to type nano.env to create this file. We can see an example of this .env file on the GitHub repo. We will copy and paste this file into our nano session. If you read the notes provided, we will need to run two commands on our systems to generate a password secret and a hashed password for admin access into our Greylog web GUI. The Greylog password secret is really just a random string. This can be anything that's really long. They recommend at least 96 characters. They give you a command here, this pwgen command that will generate a random string for you that's 96 characters in length. If you don't have it installed, we can do an apt install pwgen and this will install this application. Or you can just type in a really long random string. The next command here will create a hash of a password you type in. This will be the admin password you use to access Greylog, so remember it. We will copy and paste this hashed password into our .env file. Okay, so you should have two files inside your Greylog-docker directory, and if you do, we are ready to turn up this docker compose file. To do that, we'll type in sudo space docker space compose space up. We can see here the docker images are being pulled from docker hub, the containers are starting, and finally we get a message that we're ready to start setting up our data node. We are presented with a message telling us we need to go to a URL with some temporary credentials. You must use this login. This has nothing to do with the password we created earlier. That will be used after we set up our data node. We'll want to change the zeros in this to the IP address of our host and try to access it. Great, that works. We are now in the pre-flight setup for our data node. At this point, we are creating the necessary certificate authorities and certificates to secure our communication to the data node. As mentioned earlier, the data node is really open search under the hood with just some custom software written so we can manage the entire open search database through the Greylog web interface. The communication between the Greylog software and the data node is done over port 8999. When it comes time to send logs to the data node, we will do that over the traditional open search port of 9200. 
We also have a port 9300 for communication between data nodes if you have a cluster. This pre-flight interface is setting up the certificates for all three of these connections so we can have secure communications between everything. These certificates have nothing to do with the Graylog web interface. In fact, if you look at the URL, it's HTTP. This is why we're using the temporary username and password because we are sending that username and password in clear text. So even after we're finished with the installation, if security is concerned, I wouldn't log into the web GUI until you've secured that with HTTPS. This way the root hashed password that we created earlier is never exposed in clear text. For this video, we're gonna let Greylog handle the CA and certificates for the data node, but you do have the option of providing your own if you need to. We will create a new certificate authority and give it its name. It's now asking us how we want to deal with certificates that expire. We will select automatic here. Okay, we're going to push the certificates to the data node and get all these connections secure. Okay, with that done, we will resume setup. And we are pushed back to the actual gray log login page. The username for this will be admin and the password is the hash password we created earlier. At this point, you would most likely create an input and start inputting logs into Graylog. But when using Graylog in a Docker container, you should be aware of the port mappings in a Docker Compose file. If we bring up our Docker Compose file and look at the Graylog container, we have a number of ports here. The only one actually being used right now is port 9000. This is how we can access the Graylog web GUI. The rest of these are just examples on what you would need to do for an input. Each one of these, we are mapping a port from inside the container to a port on our host machine. So it would be considered good practice to clean up this list and only expose the ports you need. Keep in mind, if you add or delete ports here, you will need to restart the container for it to take effect. We also have Docker volumes for persistent data. When we restart containers, all changes inside the containers are lost. So we need to map volumes to folders inside the container where database and config files are stored. Basically any folder that has data we want to save between restarts will need to be mapped to a Docker volume. Luckily the example Docker compose file already maps everything so we don't have to worry about this. The only thing you might want to do is change the location of the files on the host disk. When you do volume mappings like this with just a name, the volumes are created in the var lib docker volumes directory. If you wanted to change this, you would simply need to delete the volume name and put an actual location on the host hard disk. The last thing you should be aware of is the docker network. When I run this docker compose file for the first time, it creates a unique docker network with all the containers inside the docker compose file attached to it. We can do sudo docker network ls to show us all of our docker networks. We can see our Graylog Docker network that was created. If we inspect this network, we can see what containers are attached to them and the IP addressing. You can think of the containers as being connected to a dumb switch where all of the containers have free access to talk to each other. So we don't have to do this port mapping in Docker Compose if a container is just talking to another container inside the same Docker network. I bring that up because if you look at our data node container, we are exposing a couple ports. Remember, port 8999 and 9200 are just for the Greylock software and the data node to communicate with each other. So we don't need to expose these ports outside of the container. They can communicate with each other because they are inside the same Docker network. Now, if you're going to be doing clustering of data nodes and Greylog nodes, you will absolutely need to expose them. But it's best practice to only expose the ports you actually need. Okay, the last thing we need to take care of is the docker compose up command. When I started it, I started it in an interactive shell. This is so we could see any errors easily and get the data node preflight interface credentials. But in production, this really isn't practical. So we are going to set up a systemd unit file. This will launch docker compose automatically as a daemon. It will also launch it on a restart of the server. First, we are going to kill the docker compose session by typing control C. I'll go root permanently for this next part by typing sudo-i. We will navigate to the etc systemd system directory. We want to create a new file by typing in nano space graylog docker.service. I'm going to copy an example unit file I've created. I'll leave a link to this file in the description. You'll want to make sure that the working directory is set to the folder that contains your docker compose file. You'll also want to verify that the docker command is in the user bin directory. If you install docker via snap or some other method, it could be in another directory. Also note that we are running the docker compose up command with a dash d at the end. This will start it as a daemon, so it will run in the background. Okay, we can save this. 
Next, we will type in systemctl daemon reload for systemd to pick up this new unit file we created. We will type systemctl enabled graylog docker dot service. This will enable the graylog service to start on boot. And finally, we will start the graylog docker service by typing in systemctl start graylog docker dot service. We can do a systemctl status on this graylog service to check if we got any errors. We can also do a docker ps command. This will list all of our running containers, and we currently have three. So this seems to be working fine. Congratulations, you've successfully deployed Greylog in a Docker container. Okay, that's all I have for this video. As always, thank you again for watching. Please like and subscribe.